So, you want more performance from your old CPU or processor without spending a single penny for free. Yeah, boy. So, you are in the right place. Hello, guys, Low End Gaming here. So, in this video, I will show you the easiest guide to overclock any CPU. I will tell you the safest and easiest way to overclock your processor. It does not matter if it is an AMD or an Intel processor. So, first things first. What is overclocking? In simple ways, overclocking is way in which you can increase your process speed using your BIOS or using a software. But in this video I will be using the BIOS method. So before overclocking your processor you must find if your MD or Intel processor is unlocked or overclockable or not. Or I have given a link below in the description below. Click on the link and find your processor. If it is there then you are good to go. So till now you know what is overclocking and is your processor unlocked or not. Now let's talk about some pros and cons of overclocking. So the pros of the overclocking. Overclocking allows you to basically get free value from your hardware, potentially letting the CPU last longer before it needs an upgrade, as well as just generally increasing performance in high demand applications like gaming and video editing. In simple language and increased performance while gaming and video editing, etc. Nice. Hold up, wait a minute. But let's not forget about the cons. So, as you increase the speed and voltage of the queue, it releases more heat, which can cause overheating system failures or sometimes burn your CPU. Hello there. But calm down. After watching this video, this ain't gonna happen. Boys, relax, relax. And secondly, overclocking reduces the life of your processor. So, those were some pros and cons of overclocking your processor. So, the main question arises that should you overclock your processor? Is it worth it? So, the simple answer is yes, but but but, only when you have old processor which is out of the warranty period. And don't worry about heating issues, because in this video we will only do a simple overclocking, and not a extreme one. So, that was about the theory, now let's see the process. Without wasting the time, let's get started. Let's do this. So, for overclocking, we will gonna need some softwares. The first one is core temperature. It used for checking the temperatures of processor. Then second one is IDA64. Using this software, we will be stress testing our process for stability before and after overclocking. And the last software is Signbench for benchmarking our Q processor. Don't worry, you don't have to download every software from different websites. I have given a overclocking pack for you guys to make it easier. The link is in the description below. Do and download it. After downloading the overclocking pack zip, you must extract it, and there would be all the softwares we will be needing to overclock our CPU. You must install all the softwares one by one as you do any other softwares. But you don't have to install Slimebench, you just have to extract it. So in the first phase we will we will stress our CPU using the IDA64 software. Open the software, and then in the top click on Tools. Then click on System Stability Test. Then a new window will open. Then untick all options except Stress CPU. Then you must start the test. You must run the test for minimum 5 minutes and maximum 30 minutes, and not more or less than that. For this video, I will be running the test for only 5 minutes. During the test, run the Core Temperature app to know the temperature of our processor. Make sure your CPU temperatures are between 60 to 80, or max should temp should be 90 degrees Celsius, or 95 degrees will also work. But if it is over 95, then I recommend you not to overclock your CPU. But if you still have to do it, do it on your own risk. If anything wrong happens, I am not responsible for it. But if you have stable temperatures not over 95, then you are good to go. My temperatures were between 70 to 80 and not above that, then I'm good to go. So after doing the stress test, we will be doing a benchmark. So for benchmarking, open the Signbench application. This process is gonna take time. So be patient, but it will be worth it. After opening Signbench in the top left, you will find single core and multi core. First start the single core test. This single core test will take up to 30 to 35 minutes or may take more than that. In my case it took half an hour. So after completing the test, CPU score would be shown. Make sure to note it down so we can compare it after overclocking. 
So after single core test, run a multi-core test. This would take nearly 15 to 20 minutes. In my case it took 15 minutes. So after the multi-core test, note down the scores of both single and multi-core test. So that was it for the phase 1 of the overclocking. Without wasting the time let's get to phase 2. So before actually overclocking, we should first find that till what we could overclock our CPU. So for that we should do some calculations. Generally, we can overclock up to 20 to 25% from the factory stock speed. For being in the safer side, we would do a 20% of overclock. Now we will calculate how much is 20%. So first you must know what is your base clock speed. For we will convert it from gigahertz to megahertz. Open calculator, then type your base clock speed. Round it off to make it easier. So my stock speed is 2.93 but I will write it as 2.9. Then multiply it by 1000 to convert it to megahertz. Then again multiply it by 20 and then divide it by 100. Boom this is 20% of our base clock speed. Note that everyone will get a different value. Now we will add this 20% in our base clock speed. That we got in megahertz. After adding, we will again convert the final value to gigahertz. After converting, I get a value of 3.48. But to make it easier, I will round off and I get 3.5. That's the final value. So I can conclude that I can overclock my 2.9 gigahertz to 3.5 gigahertz. This would be a different value for everyone. So don't worry. Just follow the procedure carefully and you will get it. Now as we got the exact value, let's get to the BIOS and overclock our CPU. In order to access BIOS on a Windows PC, you must press your BIOS key set by your manufacturer when your PC starts booting, which could be F10, F2, F12, F1 or delete button. If you don't know what is your key, try every key. Just keep repeatedly pressing the BIOS key when the Windows starts booting. So after getting into BIOS, we would start the process. So you will find many options, don't get panicked. So I have a Gigabyte motherboard. So there is a MIT tweaker, options from where you can change your CPU, RAM, etc. Settings. If you have a ASUS motherboard, there is options called a iTweaker. You can change settings from there. So I have a Gigabyte motherboard, so I will go with the MIT tweaker options. In case you don't find the both of them, open every option and find CPU settings. Once you find it, open it. My BIOS is 11 years old so yours would be different, but the process for all is same. So for overclocking, we will focus on two settings. That are the CPU clock ratio and the second one is CPU host clock control. Just focus on this two only. By chance the name would be different in your BIOS, like CPU multiplier etc. So listen carefully, we would adjust this to in the way that we get our clock value. That we got before during the calculations. Like I got my value of 3.5 GHz. So I will adjust those two settings in a way that the CPU frequency changes to 3.5 GHz. Guys make sure that the CPU clock control is enabled so you can change it. You may feel this is confusing, because I can't tell you every setting, because everyone has different processors and motherboard. So you have to do it on your own. You just have to alter the settings and get the final value. That's it. So I altered the settings and changed the frequency to 3.5 GHz. It's so easy just increase the multiplier and match to the final value. Now after changing the frequencies. Now let's change the voltage. You will find the voltage settings down only. If it is not then find a setting called CPU V core. After finding, do nothing. Keep it on normal or let it be on auto. So we are done with the overclocking. Press F10 key to save and exit. Now let's move to phase 3, without wasting any time. So, the last phase is two once more run stress tests and benchmark to check if the overclock was stable and worth it. So once more open the IDA64 app and run the stress test. Run it for at least 5 minutes and record the maximum CPU heat temperatures during the test using the core temperature app. After the overclock, my max temperatures were 90 degree and not above that which is good and stable. If your temperatures reach above 95, just don't overclock or just lower the frequency for being in safer side. So after the stress test, you should run the Simebench benchmark test. First run the single core test. After the overclock, 
The single core test took 20 min 25 minutes to complete which is less than before. After the single core test run the multi-core test. This time the multi-core test only took 10 to 12 minutes, which is less than before. And don't forget to note down the scores of both single and multi-core test. So all done. Now we will compare the results of processors before and after overclocking. First comes the temperatures. So before overclocking, my processor with a base clock speed of 2.9 GHz. The max temperature it reached was 80 degrees and not above that. But after overclocking, my processor at 3.5 GHz, the max temperature was 90 and not above that. So now comes the most important thing, that defies that the overclock done was useful or totally useless. That is benchmarks. So before, my processor with a base clock of 2.9 GHz, the single core test gave a score of 410 points, which is good for single core. On the other side, the multi-core test scored a total points of 834 points, which is good one. But, but, you will be shocked to see the after results. So after overclocking my CPU to 3.5 GHz, the single core test scored a total points of 528 points, which is 118 points more than before. And the multi-core test scored a total points of 1020 points, which is 186 points more than before. So we can conclude that, we have overclocked our CPU successfully and we got free performance, without spending a single penny. So if you have old PC and a processor out of warranty give it a chance. DO IT! JUST DO IT! Oh that was the end. If you watched the full video carefully, you must have also understood how to overclock your CPU. If you have any queries join my Discord server link is in the description. Feel free ask anything. And if this video helped you make sure to leave a like and see you all in the next video bye.